Intel introduces the new ATX 3.0 and ATX 12VO 2.0 specifications. ATX 3.0 is a really interesting one. It's got the 12 volt HPWR or high power connector that Intel says will power most, if not all, I can't imagine anything it wouldn't power, future PCIe 5.0 desktop cards. This thing is gonna do 600 watts of power over a single cable. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that these cards can draw an additional 75 watts from the slot. We are talking a total of 675 watts for a single card. It includes side baddened signals that let the PSU tell the GPU its power limit. So not all of them will be capable of delivering second. 600 watts. I mean, obviously, a 650 watt power supply is not going to be able to send all of it over the PCIe power cable to a GPU. Uh, so I believe they are, oh, I can't remember what the different steps are, but power supplies will have different tiers of how much power they can deliver over that connector and they will communicate that to the GPU. And there's a new power excursion limit for PCIe 5.0 cards to hopefully remedy power spikes, including updated DC voltage regulation guidelines. Intel is expecting PCIe Gen 5 devices to require even more power than the currently available ones, which says a lot in a world where NVIDIA created the RTX 3090 Ti. Has NVIDIA come out and disclosed a TDP for the 3090 Ti? I actually do not know. Oh, apparently it's 450 watts, according to Tech Power up here. 450 watts, ladies and gentlemen. Turned down for watts? Literally every watt. With a suggested power supply capacity of 850 watts. And then, what is this? Holy crap. An MSI card has supposedly leaked that has... What? It's... Oh, it's fire huge. TDP of 480 watts. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. That's crazy. Do they have more pictures of it? Holy bananas. Look how thick this thing is. It's a thick boy. It's three and a half slots. What am I even looking at? It's crazy. Wow. All right. Do you still need a minute? Because I can keep stalling. Uh, no, you can go. All right, cool. Um, also, we got 12, ATX 12VO 2.0. So ATX 12VO was all about better power efficiency at idle. And we actually got our hands on a compatible power supply and motherboard. Must have been about, must have been over a year ago? About a year ago? I don't remember. The point is we got our hands on it and it really worked. Huge difference. So I'm kind of excited about this just from like an environmental standpoint. Um, and let's have a look at what it does. Okay, so it's got the I underscore PSU percent feature. Uncertain what that is, but it was previously available in mobile and server systems. Anthony says, presumably this refers to communicating total PSU utilization so that resources can be allocated to the devices that need it most, but that's just a theory. A game theory, good reference, love it. <laughs> Intel also claims the new spec will help small form factor PCs meet energy regulations, specifically calling out California's tier two appliance rules. So this could mean that, uh, oh, this probably refers to California's 60 kilowatt hour per year figure for desktops with an expandability score between 250 and 425. Intel claims this is the most substantial change to the ATX spec since ATX 2.0 in 2003. And for reference, that included emphasizing a shift from 3.3 and 5 volt to 12 volt, uh, independent over current protection for each 12 volt rail, the 24 pin ATX connector up from 20 pin that replaced the six pin auxiliary connector, SATA power connectors being mandatory, alternative sleep mode, AKA modern standby V2.5 one and ripple efficiency, minimum load guidelines and requirements in point updates. Here's our discussion question posed by Anthony Young. Do we really need 600 watts of capacity running over a single connector to a single card? I say yes. Yeah, why not? On the one hand, I'm very pro-efficiency, but on the other hand, man, when I press that gas pedal, 
I want it to just belch black pro, smoke, baby. You can be pro efficient. <laughs> you, you can be pro efficiency and also obviously I'm playing a bit of a character right want now. Want the uh, availability of the option of power when needed. Yeah, for sure. I mean, for applications where the performance matters, by all means, and especially seeing the way that um, graphics card manufacturers are building tools that allow you to limit the power consumption and limit also, the performance high draw of the device. Doesn't mean low efficiency. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing. It could be it could be spitting out so many frames. Yeah, six hundred watts is a lot. I mean, the cooling that's challenges. The cooling challenges. Oh yeah. Well, the card was huge. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Water cooling is almost like a necessity by that point. I feel like I would default to that, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're not going to be putting many other cards in a computer that's got one and of like, those in it. And not with a really tiny rad either. Nope. Like, it's going to have to be a pretty serious setup. We've already reached the point where triple rad setups on Intel K-series SKUs kind of like can outperform dual rad setups. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, in a way that is meaningful, mm. in a way that matters. I thought you meant whole system. I was actually asked in Floatplane chat for thoughts on the 12900KS being $800. Frankly, for the performance, it doesn't surprise me that much, but I am looking forward to Intel having a more efficient gaming chip, and hopefully we're going to see that with Raptor Lake down the road. Or is Rocket Lake coming first? I can't remember which one's first. Rocket. I mean, maybe Rocket is first and then Raptor Lake. I, I can never keep all the lakes, code words, code names straight. Also, just as an update on the forms, I tried to like open the applications on my phone, yeah. but it, it, I have no control over the phone or over the form through my phone. So I'm going to have to do it when I get home. Uh, Twitch plays Dion says eight hundred dollar CPU WTF bruh, but remember Extreme Edition doesn't even exist anymore. Those used to start at like a thousand dollars for that whole lineup. Intel doesn't even have that anymore. So if this is an Extreme Edition and it's a sixteen core CPU that's real fast for like everything, then uh, yeah, it's a lot of money and most people won't buy it. But most people never were buying CPUs in that price range. And you could almost think of it as discounted compared to what we used to pay for a 16-core CPU. Almost. Because I remember the days when even the top-end Extreme Edition was a grand and yeah. not like two grand or whatever. Yeah. Whatever shark jumping they had done by the end of it. They did some pretty rapid hops near the end. And man, I'll be real interested to see what pricing is like for 3090 Ti. Will it reflect pandemic shortage pricing or will it ref reflect the more recent price drops that we've actually witnessed in the GPU market? Like let's head over to actually, you know what? I've read about it, but I have not personally verified any of this the yet. Used market drops? I saw that 3070 TIs were going for not outlandish amounts of money in the secondary market. 3070 TI, all right. And then let's this is this is always my way. This is my way. Show only sold items. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Hmm, okay. 750, open box, 880, 780, 830. So it looks like they're really in the high 700s, low 900s range. Here's one from today for 660, though. Like that seems to be coming down to earth a little bit. Here's an EVGA FTW3 for 635. I mean, that wouldn't have happened. Not that long ago. Launch price of a 3070 Ti was five ninety nine, right? Mm-hmm. So they can be had for approaching MSRP, but a lot of people are still paying far too much for them is what it looks like right now. But it's not double MSRP like it was. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it's improved. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah. Hey, my take is not that the 12900KS is a bargain. My take is that you weren't going to buy it anyway. It was, it, was a, 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 it was a segment of the market that was never served, that you were never part of, and that's okay. I've never bought an Extreme Edition, oh, except Intel Retail Edge. You've never bought an Extreme Edition. Except, Except Intel, Intel retail, retail Edge, edge yeah. which were deeply, deeply discounted CPUs for oh, yeah. retail um, like salespeople. So d don't take it personally when I say you're not the target market. I'm not the target market either because I think you'd have to be crazy 
to buy the KS when the K exists. In fact, if I was just building a rig for someone whose money I cared about, I wouldn't go above the i7. I don't think I ever have. Like the... Yeah, well, I know. Uh, the 12600K is like still a 12 core. It's got all eight performance cores. It's overclockable if you really want that extra little bit of gaming performance. Like, there you go. That's it. Actually, there's some really good value, like I've even had, like Core i5s. Have and you stuff. ever had people Older that like, like pretty good got you to build a computer ask for higher than an i7 equivalent? Oh yeah, I mean back when I was working at NCIX, of course. I oh, I tried yeah. to talk every extreme sense. edition buyer out of it. You know what's crazy? I had someone message me with uh with a customer service request that they sent in to the PC advisor at NCIX, which was an email inbox that I manned alone back in those days. And they were like, hey, just wanted to show you this as a blast from the past, a little bit of nostalgia, and it had their question and my answer. And I can't figure out where they sent it to me anymore. Oh, yeah. I'm so frustrated because I thought it was so cool that they went out of their way to send that to me. And I I can't figure it out. It's not, I, I can't find it in my inbox on the forum. I can't find it in my email. I have no idea where they sent it to me. Now that you're saying this, I'll probably just send it again. Yeah, maybe maybe they will, but. Might solve that problem. Yeah, it sucks. Because I thought it Did was really like, funny. Did you like remember it? No, no, not yeah. at all. I mean, it was just, you know, generic, which GPU should I pick oh, okay, and how many yeah, hard drives, yeah. like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But it was definitely written by me when I had time because I was very thorough. And I was like, oh, wow, I did a really great job. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I, yeah, it sucks. I, I, I would have loved, I would have loved to show it to you guys because I just thought it was really funny.